As you go through this painting, make sure you're always looking at the reference photo with them because that's what I'm looking at as I'm teaching you how to paint it. We're gonna start with one of our biggest brushes, whatever you got. This is what I'm gonna be using this time. And we're gonna take out our dark blue onto our palettes. Any blue that you have at home will work. So when it comes to our first step, we are just going to fill out our background to make this white empty canvas a little less intimidating. So we're taking that big old brush that we're using and we're going into our water dish if you look down on the side here. And I'm just going to scoop up some water. See with my brush I'm like scooping water right beside that little blue pile of paint that we just made on our palette. we're just going to mix in a little tiny touch of paint into that big pile of water that we made and mix it in until we get the consistency like a chocolate milky consistency we don't want too much water we don't want too much paint we're just doing a light wash over top of this canvas so we're going to start every bristle of our brush is filled with paint and see how it's nice and wet it can drip off of your brush add a little more if you want but we're gonna start by just one end of our canvas and we're just gonna pull that wet blue paint across some of you might not be working on easels with your painting up like that and that's okay you can work flat So if I ever tell you to do something that you don't like or don't think will work with your style or your painting, ignore me and do whatever you want. We are here to all just make our own pictures and they're all gonna look different, I promise you, right now. So we've got that background started. It's just a light, see how it's very wet. We are just filling up that canvas to make sure that we have the base of where we want our island, city, town, kingdom, we don't know yet, to go. We're gonna have to wait a couple minutes to let it dry fully. You'll know when it's dry if you look at it from the side and you can see it's not shiny anymore. If you look at it right now, you'll see the wet parts are really shiny, they catch the light. But once it's dry, it'll be a little more dull we want it to be kind of in the middle. We don't want it sopping wet. From here, once it dries a little bit, it's okay if there's still a couple shiny spots on our canvas. We're gonna go to our middle brush now. Remember, it can be pointed, it can be square, it can be square. It doesn't really matter as long as it's a little bit smaller than the brush we just used and a little bit bigger than your smallest brush. So we're going to take some white out onto our palettes. And we're going to kind of do the same thing as we did with the blue. We're going to scoop some of the water from our water dish right beside our pile of white paint. And we're going to grab little chunks of that white paint and just blend it around in there to make a little bit thicker of a consistency of the blue. Again, when there's lots of water in our paint, it really helps the paint dry a little more translucent. So imagine that what we're doing right now is just doing a rough pencil sketch of where we want everything to go. It's our rough draft, it's our rough drawing. It's okay if it's not perfect, but when we add water to our paint like that, it really helps us make not permanent lines. We can easily paint over them later. So for an easy start of laying out our city, we're just gonna draw a line See how I'm holding my paintbrush really far back because I want it to be nice and loose. I don't need to be very special and detailed because it's our rough drawing. And I'm going to go about a little under halfway, right about here. And with this watered down white paint that we have, I'm just going to draw a line. Oh, see, it's a little wobbly. That's okay. You can go over it a couple times. We're just trying to figure out where the base of our buildings are gonna go, right at the bottom of that statue, where's the line? And see, it's light because it's very watered down paint. It's light, it's gonna dry really light because it's just our base sketch, okay? And 
from here, we're going to do just another line. We're just laying out where these cities are going. So let's put another line right across. How many inches is that? Right, we're kind of going in the middle of this space that we made. If you picture this as a rectangle, go right into the middle of it. See how my paint's dripping a little bit? That's how watery we for sure want our paint to be. And it's okay if it drips, it's okay if it doesn't. Some of you are working flat, so the drip probably is non-existent. You can wipe it away if you want. But the drip does show how watery that paint is and how watery we want it to be. Okay. From here, we are gonna decide where that little mountain in the background is going. You can see if you squint, it's nice and light in the back, and that's what we want too in our painting. We want it to be pushed in the background so it looks like it's really far away. And since we have this watered down white paint, that's totally what we're gonna be using. And we are going to come in a little bit, a couple inches off the side, and we're gonna draw that mountain in the back. And when you look at a mountain, what is the most simplified shape of it, right? We're starting with our basics. It's a triangle. So decide where you want that top of your mountain to go. And some of you might just look at that mountain and be able to just trace out exactly what it looks like. Some visual people can do that. Some people have no idea what I'm even talking about when I say that. So if you want, why don't you just draw a big triangle? Simplify the shape of it. We know that the mountain is basically a triangle, right? Just like that but we can go off the edge and draw another little triangle, right? We're looking at that background and seeing that little mountain. Maybe another little triangle on the side, just to show it's a natural piece of land. It doesn't have to be perfect. We can sharpen up the top too before it goes down the triangle. Again, it doesn't have to be exactly like mine. It doesn't have to be perfect. The more rough it is, probably the better because it's really a piece of land. It's a piece of real structure in nature and nature's never perfectly symmetrical, right? And from there on the left-hand side of all these triangles, let's just rub in some of this really light watered down white paint. See how I'm showing some of that dark blue is still peeking through the back, but we're gonna put some white lines are all pointing down they're all following the direction of the triangle the initial triangle triangle that we drew but it's gonna look like nothing and we kind of want it to look like nothing it's not the focal point of our picture but we're just implying that there's a mountain back there we're going to touch it up a little bit later with some more detail but for now look at that we've got a mountain in the background okay and now from there, we can start building up our city a little bit better. Town, I'm not sure what to call it yet. That's the best part. What do you guys think? From the books, do you know specifically where this is when you see that statue? There's lots of debate online as who he could be. I'm probably gonna butcher the names because when you read something, but you don't really know how to pronounce it, you pronounce it a certain way. Okay. I'm thinking it's Elros and maybe Aldarian. Who knows? Elros? Elros? Aldarian? All right, we've got a rough mountain in the background. If I bring it a little closer, you'll even see, right? It is not really anything. If you squint it, it's a bunch of rough lines. But you all know that we did a triangle first and just build off a couple little scribbles to show that there's a mountain far in the background of our painting. Okay. Now from here, let's decide where all this stuff's gonna go. It might be a little overwhelming when you're looking at the picture now, like we're gonna paint a full city, but we are just gonna add small little details that's gonna imply everything down the bottom. So you don't have to worry about painting every single little shape, every single rock. We are easily just going to put a couple dots, a little bit of splatter, and the buildings will be complete. Okay, now let's get into where the rest of the buildings are gonna go. So if we look at our reference photo, we can see that there is one mass in the back of the statue, big 
blockchain maybe is part of. And then there's in the foreground, there is something that also is highly debatable online. We don't really know fully what it could be, but I think it's a lighthouse. Maybe, we'll see. Uh, and then on the far right, we have a little bit more of the city, but closer to us. So we'll start from the back, just like we did the mountain, which is the furthest in the back. Now we're going to come up to the left hand part of the painting where the statue is. We're going to roughly lay out where those go. So from the bottom point of our mountain that we made, right? We made two triangles with a little triangle here. We're going to put a line right down there to show us where these two pieces of land intersect. So first, from over here, we are going to decide where our big king statue is going to go. So if we look at our reference photo, we can see where the little end of this mountain ends. It's about an inch over from there. So let's just draw. Another big rectangle. which is where our statue and the rest of the mountain behind him goes. Wipe that off. And before we can map anything else out, we're gonna bring that mountain down. See, right from our rectangle, we can see that the mountain goes right down the edge. So let's bring that line down. We're still using our medium brush. We're still using our watered down white, wet paint. Perfect. Oops, that's a mistake. So now we know where the back road is going to be laid out. Now we're gonna to come to this side and the piece of land that's a little bit closer to us, we're going to map out where that's gonna go. It's a little bit shorter than the land behind it, but it's matching up to this line that we've created already. So we're gonna come about an inch down from our original. And we're gonna just make a line on an angle all the way up to touching our mountain. Right? We're just going to want to bring down this line. We're going to curve it a little bit just to show that it's on the coast. So we're going to bring our line a little bit down. We're going to be parallel to the line that we've already drawn. But as we get about halfway, we're just going to curve that line down. All right, we've curved this one up. Now we've curved this one down. Slowly our buildings are coming together. Before we start getting to painting, which is the more fun part, this is kind of the technical area where we're adding in all the shapes. Last thing we gotta do is add in that, again, I think it's a lighthouse, up for debate. But the tower that's in the foreground, it's the closest thing to us. We're gonna map out where it's gonna go. We're gonna add a lot more depth into our painting when we can use our values to show what's close to us and what's far away. All right, so looking at our reference photo, we can see that the mountain, when it comes on down, the curve behind our statue's back is about exactly where our tower is supposed to go. It's about almost the same size of our mountain before, so let's just make our little line of where we think the top of it should go. And same thing as we've done before, we're just gonna draw that rectangle all the way down We've broken it down to its simplest form, right? We don't have to worry about all the fine details. At this point, we're just laying out. It's our rough draft. It's our rough pencil drawing. Okay. It's, oops, I went ahead with them through there. And we are going to just at the bottom do another curve, right? We've curved up here at the top of our mountain. 
Now at the bottom of our tower, we're curving on down. Okay. I know a lot of you are probably looking at this right now being like, where are we going with this? But I promise you, if you trust that process up there, we're going to have Numenor done in no time. So everything of importance has been laid out in our painting. Now we get to get to the fun part where we're going to be painting in a bunch of these shapes, okay? We are going to start with our darker values. So we're going to have to take out our black paint, our brown paint, and we already have white. When it comes to mixing colors with black paint, you always have to be very careful because it's a very powerful, strong pigment. So you wanna be careful. You only wanna add little tiny touches of black when you're mixing with any other color. All right, so we're gonna get out our brushes. We're gonna take a tiny little touch of black, a tiny touch, you see it's like just the tip of my paintbrush. And we're gonna grab a big glob, if you can see here, right? We have a big glob of brown paint. And I'm gonna mix it together to make that brown a little bit darker. Again, we don't want it to be black, we want it to be a darker brown. But we're gonna add one tiny touch of white in it as well, just to brighten it up so it's not black. I know mixing colors for people sometimes is hard, so don't stress out. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. It doesn't have to be perfect. We just want a darker brown color to fill in the back shapes. Okay, are we ready to go with our brown? I'm still using our medium paintbrush, the same one that we were just using before. We have our dark brown on our paintbrushes, and now we're not doing that watered down consistency. Now we're just gonna dip our brush once and then come into this pile of paint. We want it to be nice and thick, so we're using not much water and see how I'm mixing my brush around a bunch of times to be able to fill every bristle up with this brown paint. And we are going to go over these shapes and fill them in with this dark brown. So we'll start at this angle. We have that little triangle here. We're just gonna do one dark line right across it. On my screen, it might look darker than it should be. Again, you want it to be brown. You don't want it to be black. And we're just gonna fill in the shape. If your paint doesn't feel like it's pulling nicely across the canvas, make sure that you add a little more water to your brush. We have our base shapes laid out and we're ready to move on to a lighter value. One thing I'm gonna bring up, I'm just noticing last minute. Let's add just a little angle here. All of our shapes are built in and we're ready to move on to the next step. So we have that brown and that black concoction mixed already. We're just gonna add a touch of white. Got a touch of the tip of my paintbrush. I'm gonna mix it in with this color. So it's the color that we were already using, but in a lighter value. I'm still using my medium sized brush, same brush as before. And we're going to start deciding where our statue is going to go. Usually people are very difficult to paint and I don't want you to be intimidated by it because we're just doing a rough layout of him. We're just using our shapes and some shadows. Don't think of it like we're painting a person. Easiest way to start is just with his head, which is just a little square. Right. Again, it's not going to be too much lighter than the brown we already have. Right, we've got a head. 
And from that head, he has a body. So we're just gonna do a little bit. We're gonna come out from his head a tiny touch and we're gonna bring that line just straight down. And remember, this is the light, a touch lighter. You can see on the screen that it's a tiny bit lighter than the brown that we've already placed down before. And we're just gonna lightly fill in a rectangle that where his body goes. Remember, we're using more paint than water, just a little bit of water on our brush and using that thick globs of paint that we have mixed. And to do that arm of his, we're gonna go from that shoulder that we just made and just do another rectangle. Right out the side. Don't think that we're drawing an arm, we're just doing a rectangle. And right out the top of that rectangle that we just built, we're just gonna do a nice little hand, right? And that hand is just gonna be a square, another square. See how it's come right out of the rectangle arm that we've made. And with this lighter brown, we're gonna come about an inch over top here and just fill in where we see that grass is gonna go. Remember, this is our lighter brown. That's why it looks a little bit different. We're adding a little bit of depth as we go through. We're squinting at our reference photo and seeing where we put the light already. On this side of our rectangle, of our circle, we have a little bit of a lighter color. Again, we're just laying out values, laying out shapes. Don't try to be precise. I'm still holding my paintbrush really far down because it's really loose at the moment, the paint strokes that we're doing. You can even off the top of our angled line here, you can make some more of these shapes of these buildings. All right, so just little rectangles. Peeking up, out top of that straight line that we did. All right, we're just building up. When I bring it close, you can see how they're just really simplified shapes. We don't have to think too much about it right now. We're just implying that there's some buildings in the background, implying that there's some buildings off the top of our little mountain that we had. Again, they're just little rectangles because it's not that smooth shape that we started. The smooth shape is what is the simplified version. It's the easiest way to lay out what we're drawing. But now slowly and surely, we're gonna be adding little details onto each of our simplified shapes so that it looks like what we want. All right, and still with our little bit of that color that we have left, again, it's the brown that we started with, but we added a bit of the lighter color on top. And we are just going to add more white to that. I ran out of that color a little quick. Just mixing a touch more of it. With this same color we've been using across the edge here, we're adding a little bit of that lighter color to the left-hand side of our tower. Lighthouse. We'll see after September 2nd. See, it's just on the left-hand side of our tower. Now as we're on to our next step, it's going to be pretty redundant and about the same thing that we've done before, but now we're adding another lighter value. So we're taking that brown with a little bit of black and a lot of white mixture. But now we want even more white to be added in. We want to add where the sun is hitting all these shapes in this building. And from here, we're going to be adding just rectangle shapes to fill in all these spaces, but you don't wanna cover your work that we've done before, right? We have a couple layers of color already. We don't wanna paint over that completely because we did that for a reason to be seen. I'm just simplifying the shapes that I've seen in the photo. But again, we don't want you to be worried that it's exactly where in the right spot. This is a picture zoomed out from far away, a rough representation of what we know to be Numenor right now. But again, when we look close, they're really just little squares. 
they're messy, they're not perfect rectangles. You can see that the brush strokes are going off the edges. But we're getting the point across. Still, we have this lighter brown on our brushes and we are gonna start playing around with our back edge. We don't want as much light on there because again, it's the furthest away. The sun's hitting it a little bit differently. So our first step is just filling out his face, a smaller square within the big square that we made. And again, another little rectangle just right over top. Right, we did a square within and we've got a little rectangle right over top for his hair. And from that hairline we just drew, we're drawing an angle right down. He's got to have that long flowing hair in there. So from the top to the bottom of our mountain there, we have it angled down. Our original square was within that shape, but we drew an angle right outside the box. If you're worried that you've covered over some of your work already, don't worry about that. It's easy for us to go back in with that same color later and we can darken up those dark spots. And we still are using that same brown on our brush. We're gonna to go to the other side of our tower and we're gonna mimic this angled line that we've done. And let's just do another light line. Boop. And just like we did these archways from far away, these archways are a little bit closer, so they're gonna be a lot bigger. So let's just make one big archway and start the other one, all right? With that lighter brown, we've built another archway. I'm still using the same brown and we're gonna do the same thing on our tower. We're bringing it back with slight swipes of this lighter color. See how I'm going down the tower acknowledging where the bottom of these circles go. And already our tower is kind of coming to life in the front there. Tower lighthouse. As we get to the next lighter stage, we're going to add a little bit of color into this concoction we've been making so that we get that yellowy feel of the rock. It's not really just brown. We want to have a little bit of yellow in there. So I'm going to take a tiny touch of yellow onto my palette. I don't need too much of it. And you probably guessed it, we're going to be doing just a lighter stage again. We're going back into that concoction that we've made. We're adding way more white into it. See that big chunk of white that I grabbed to add inside? And a little bit of yellow. And we are mixing it in. Again, we still want the brown in there. We still want it to be the same color we're using before, but we've lightened up a tiny bit. We put a tiny touch of yellow to show that stone catching the sun. So let's start down in our foreground city here and let's just add to that bridge. Again, we don't want to cover all of our work from below, right? We want to show all those different values that we've put in it. So we're just adding tiny touches to fill in that bridge. The 
could see already from far away, it looks like these buildings are being formed. And we can move back onto our king a tiny touch more. And again, we're going over those same shapes, but we're not covering them up completely. We're going on the left-hand side of them. If I bring it closer, right? You can still see that secondary color that we've placed. On the left-hand side of that square face we've already made in there, we're gonna fill it in a little bit. Right on his chest, just a little spot. His jacket, the left-hand side. Again, when we're squinting at our picture, we're seeing where these lighter areas are popping through, right? Some of us don't know how the lighting works or where shadows will go, and that's what the reference photo's for, and that's what helps us out. A little bit of this cloak of his, and again, when it comes to detail, right, depending how much detail you want, you can lightly brush a couple strokes of that color so it looks like his robe. Carry his jacket or cloak through. And a tiny touch of that sword, so just a little bit on the bottom. Again, we can see the color that we put there originally. Don't want to cover it up completely. And now we're going back to those shapes again. Where are these bright colors? On the left hand side, we'll be adding some in. A little bit up here, but mostly on these ones. I'm finding where we already put some of those light colors and adding in rough strokes of this lighter sun kissed white. but a lot of down here is covered in shadow, so we don't have to. But I want you to see how roughly I'm doing it, right? It's rough brush strokes. I'm not treating it precious. Now we're bringing this light color up to our lighthouse and same thing we're gonna do a little line on top and same where we did those lines already we're gonna go right to the left of it because that's where our sun is shining and we're starting to slowly add more detail to understand what we're looking at Now for us to change it up a little bit, it's time to start adding some of that green in there to fill up some of those spaces before we see what else we have to fill in. I'm gonna be using some chromium oxide green. Again, any green that you want at home works. A little bit on my palette. I'm gonna take out a medium sized brush Again, completely up to you if you want it to be square format or pointed, whatever feels right. I'm gonna use the square and I'm gonna go right into my green paint. I'm just gonna get my brush wet a little bit, but I'm not making that chocolate milk consistency. We want it pretty thick, a little bit of water on there. 
but we're going to see where we see green in our picture below, right? We're going to add just little trees. See how I'm just globbing on some of this green, pretending like it's a tree. If I bring it close, can you see, right? We've just got little lines along the tree bend here. just kind of plopping them in. You can tell it's a very luscious town. We're just going to start dabbing in some of this green to just imply all that greenery that we know is in there. Just like we've done before with all the other steps, obviously we're gonna have to add a little bit of a lighter green in there so that we can get a little more detail. So I'm just gonna get I'm just gonna add a little bit of this whiter highlighted green just to show some of that greenery sparkling in the sun. Again, look at how loose I'm doing it. I don't want you to be too, too precious. It shouldn't take too long. Now that we've got all the basics laid out in our city, we're gonna start laying in the water a little bit. Since we still have some of these colors on our palette, this lighter brown that we were using, I'm still gonna use that same brush. I just started using this square brush. We're gonna get Lots of water on our brush, and we're going to grab a little bit of that light color, this lighter color, right, that we've used. We're going to water down our brush a lot because we're painting water. We can use water to help us get that watery effect. So we're going to imagine that these lighter colors that we've already painted in are reflecting on the water below. It doesn't have to be exact by any means, but we're just going to kind of roughly with this watered down paint, we are gonna kind of mock these shapes, right? Like, so there was a shape here, I drew a line down. There's this line here, I drew a rank, rectangle this way. The closer to the coast, right? This is our shoreline. That's where we're kind of mocking. So I'm just kind of, again, roughly, we're not really doing it exact. We're just implying that is in the water. And now since that's super watered down, you can dip your brush into the water, kind of dab it on your paper towel or your rag to just kind of clean it up a little bit. And with just water on your brush, you can kind of pull left and right. So see how I'm just kind of pulling these paint. So it looks like it's rippling through water. I'm going to bring it a little bit closer so that you guys can see a little bit better. But left to right, not up and down, always left to right, because we're trying to kind of make it look like a reflection in the water. See how we kind of pulled it to the side? You can see that it's very loosey goosey. It's drying very clear because there's lots of water in it. But we're just pulling it across the page. See how already you can kind of see it looks like it's reflecting off into the water. Same with over here, we're gonna want a little bit, we're using that really watered down paint. And let's just pull some of these lines down, imagining, right, that it's those. And over here, we just want a little bit of that reflection. And then again, right, clean off your brush, get it nice and wet, clean and wet, and you're gonna pull it across left to right. That's the direction of the water. Just like the little ripples, that's what we're looking for. I'm pretty light on my brush. I'm not hold, pushing too hard on it, right? Look at that. It already looks like we've got some of that water reflection going. Okay. Now we've kind of laid out a lot of the groundwork. I'm still using this medium sized square brush. I know a lot of people prefer to use a rounded brush instead with a point. Feel free totally to use that if you want. So I'm going into my water and I'm gonna grab a little bit of the blue. You can see in my palette here, I'm grabbing a bit of the blue. 
and a bit of our green. Okay, we've got a little bit of green, a little bit of blue, and I'm mixing it together to make a greeny blue concoction down here. And I think it's pretty much equal parts blue and green. Again, it doesn't have to be exact. We just want to add a little bit of color into that water. And we're going to be going in with just blue as well, but we're starting with the blue and the green. So I want it pretty watered down again, remember, because water means that it's going to paint is going to dry a little more translucent. We like that. We want it to paint dry translucent. And we're going to start from the left hand side. Again, lots of water. And we are going to stick to that rule of left to right. Left to right. Left to right. And I'm just pulling it. I'm not going to go all the way over. But we are just brushing it lightly. See how we're darkening up the water a bit. You can even add a little bit more since it's really watery, right? It's very translucent. But same thing, we're pulling through. You can pull through that blue color that we've already put through on there. You can go a little bit over our trees a little bit with this greeny blue. Oops. And same here, the coast is a little bit darker on the shoreline. If you feel like you put it on with not enough water and it's gonna dry too dark, that's easy. You clean off that brush, dip it with water and go back over top what you've already done. And we're pulling it across. Don't want to cover up your work. I'm going to say it a million times. You're probably going to be annoyed, but we need to make sure that you see your work that you've already done. And while we have that color on our brush, again, really watered down because we want it to dry translucent. We're going to go up into our mountain. Again, there's blue and green. We're going up into our mountain with this watered down color. We're going to go on the right hand side. Oops, we want it way lighter than that. And we are just going to fill in the right hand side, right? Because when it's lighter, we've been always been filling in the left hand side, but we need to imply some of that shadow. So see me just sprinkling in tiny touches of this very watered down bluey green that we were just using. It's still, that mountain is really far in the background. It's still super light, but now it has a little bit more oomph to it. It has a little bit more body. Right, you can see it a little bit better. Now it's time for us to take out our smallest brushes. Whatever you got, the smallest things you've got. We're gonna start defining some of these shapes with our black. First things first, we're gonna add a touch of brown. We want a big glob of brown and a tiny little touch of black. So we want it to be more brown than black. Again, almost kind of like our first color that we're gonna lay down. We want it to be nice and dark, the darkest that we see on here. We wanna save pure black for the front foreground, but we're gonna use this very dark brown to start doing some of our outlines and some of our details in the background. So to start, we're just going to define some of these shapes. So as we see right in our little archways, we are going to curve over through. Water on your brush is really going to help you pull that stuff across. We don't want it to be that watercolory chocolate milk consistency. We really want it to be pretty thick paint, but with a wet brush. We're going to define some of those shapes and just add in subtle little dots that are going to imply that there's windows in there, right? So if we go over here with our brush, just do tiny little dots as we go across. Look, they're not exactly perfect. They're not in a line. If you look at it up close, they're actually a little crazy. But from far away, we're starting to slowly add some of this detail that's going to really make it look like there are buildings back there. There is detail back there that we don't really need to have all of these pieces. So same down here. Maybe we add a couple little more windows down here with this dark black brown that we did. We can 
looking to find that arch again with our dark black brown roughly adding maybe some longer windows at the bottom maybe a little door with the square And I'm just going through, making little dots. Some of you might look at the actual picture of Numenor and try to do exactly each shape. That is totally up to you. Some people like to be very nice and nitpicky on the details. And I like to just imply them and take shortcuts. With this darker color now, we're going into our background. We can apply some of these shapes back here. My go-to are the little dots. Again, you're not gonna see much back there. We don't need to see too much, but adding just a couple little details in those dark shapes will help build dimension. We're still using this darker brown, black brown. We've gone through, we've made some lines, some shapes on the side. Now if we come up to our king, this is really when we're gonna define some of those shapes. So we're squinting at him and we're seeing where do we need to knock images back or pictures back. He's got two eyes. Good thing that we've shaped out his face, right? We're just gonna do two little dots and maybe one more little dot of a nose. We're not gonna draw his whole face. We don't have to. We're just gonna be putting in some of the areas to imply it. Do those dark lines around that sword of his and to imply the shadow of his cloak, robe, I keep calling it something different. We're not going to do too much more to that mighty king. He's implied in there. We've got his shadow. With this one dark color, you can even just pull one little finger out of the side if you want. We're not doing hands, but we can do a couple little lines out the side to imply his hands. back into that little city, adding a couple more of the darker browns. Again, little dots for little windows. Just to imply where it's going. Some lines and these pillars that we've made. We've really done all the work already. We just keep redefining with different values and colors. Again, we don't want to have to worry about all the detail back there. We're just placing a couple shapes, a couple colors. Now with that same brush that we've been using, we're gonna go right into our pure black because of course our lighthouse at the front is in our very foreground. Remember we talked at the start, we wanted to be the darkest. So I'm using that same brush and I'm going into just black. I'm not doing that brown black, I'm doing just black. I'm getting a little bit of water on my brush and we're going to start kind of really more defining what that lighthouse looks like right now, right? So right on top, there's a little ring. So we'll do a black line right on top and now see how when I want to do these nice outlines. I'm holding my brush way closer, 
way closer to the end because I want more control with my arm. It's not that loosey goosey from the side. It's more nice up and close because I want to hold on well. And you can put your elbow on your table if you need a little bit more help. We've still got our black on our brush and we are defining more of those shapes. With our black thick outline at the front, it'll really prove that this is in the foreground. It pushes everything back in the background a little bit more. And again, down the edge here, we still want a good outline. You can even put some of those little rocks in there. And again, I'm just blobbing my paintbrush onto the canvas. Now that our water has dried, we're just going to add a couple little boats in there quick, but we're not going to worry about what, what that boat looks like. We're going to take our brown. You can take the black brown if you want. You can take brown straight out of your tube, whatever you prefer, really. Let's just do a couple boats. I don't know. Maybe there's a boat right here and it's just a little rectangle. Maybe it's curved a little bit. I don't know. Over here, should we do a bigger one? Let's do, because it's closer to us, another boat. A little curve at the end there. But it's basically just a rectangle. We can even add little tiny boats over here, just little ones. They're always going left to right, right? We want to show that they're on the same plane as the water. They're little just dot, dot, dots. Make a little one over here too. Who knows? And I'm sure you guess what we're going to do, but it's going to be very quick. You're just adding a tiny touch of white back into your brown. Just do a little blob of a secondary color on top of those rectangles you've already made just to give them a little dimension. You're going to hear me say it a million times. But instead of just a blob, we want to add little tiny white specks on top to show that there is some light being reflected off of a surface. With those little beans at the bottom there. With that blue green concoction we had before, nice and watered down to still remember, we're going to add just a little bit of a shadow because these things need shadows too, right? And so we're doing that left to right, the same thing we've done before. Always when we're painting on the water, we're going left to right, left to right, but underneath just a little shadow underneath all of our boats, right? And it kind of, you go outwards after just lightly bringing those little shadows. So it doesn't just look like they're random things just floating. They have substance. They have mass that's projecting shadows in our world that we're creating. But again, very subtle. You don't have to go too crazy with it. But see how we just added a couple lines on the bottom and it looks like that boat is in the water. So we're going to get a medium sized brush out. It can be pointed, right? We want to get our paint brush nice and watery and we're going right into that white. And the first thing we're going to do is kind of build up a clouds since we're using very watered down, right? Our good old chocolate milk consistency. We're just going to fluff some clouds into the side, right? but we're just kind of dabbing a really watered down white paint to add some nice clouds into the sky. See how it's nice and watered? And when we still have this watered down, maybe a little bit thicker than watered down, but I'm going to go right into my water. Oops, I did it a little thick. Again, dipping my brush in water and pulling it back over top of something that I put on too thick will always blend it out. 
But we want to add some nice highlighted reflections onto our water. You can use a skinnier brush if that makes you more comfortable. But again, in this middle part, we're going to put a little bit of these white swipe, swipe, swipes. We've been doing it before. It's nothing new. But we want to show that the water's got some nice highlight reflections off of it. And now we have the white out. We're going to use a nice small brush here for you. Now we want thick white paint. We don't want it to be that watered down. We want pretty thick, a little bit of water on your brush because it always helps. But we're only choosing a couple tiny places to add some white highlight on our background. So first on our king's head, just a tiny little bit around his face. And up his hair. Again, we're doing that good old squint where when you squint, do you see the lightest colors? We just want to add the perfect highlights on top. Maybe just tiny tips up here of white, just a little catch. Do you realize how as we were going through, right, we did huge big shapes, big brush strokes. And then as we get to more detail, it really gets to tiny, tiny little touches. Little tiny touches. Maybe on the boat in the front you can put a little bit of highlight on your boats if you want to. Just to give them a little something else. Where the sun hits the most. Just to pop up some of those shapes a little bit more. We still have pure white on our brush and we are going to be going to the tip top of our tower. And maybe just pure white, a couple little tap taps on our little trees down here on these little bunches that we made, just a couple highlights. Depending on your painting, some of you, maybe your mountain has went a little bit too far in the background. You're losing it a little bit. You can easily go in with your pure white again with a little bit of water still. You don't want it to be too crazy, but just go over some of those white spots with just a little bit more of your watered down white. Right, see it bumps up a little bit more. We still want it to be far in the background. You don't want it to be too in your face, but you can see it nice back there. Okay, so our final touch is gonna be that flame coming out of our, you enter the word there, <laughs> tower, lighthouse, whatever. We are going to get a little bit of orange out onto our palettes. We don't need much at all. And we already have our yellow out there, so that's great. Whatever size brush you want, probably a medium sized brush is best. I'm gonna get it a little wet and I'm gonna go right into my orange first. Just like how water helped us paint water, water will help us paint that flowy look of the fire coming out of our tower as well. So with that brush, you're just gonna lightly flick, flick, flick. Your orange going in this curved direction. See how it's going this way, right? It's turning towards our statue. I've got a little bit of orange in there. It's a little watered down, right? A little translucent, that's awesome. And then you're gonna go right into your yellow and go right into that middle absence there, right? Paint a little bit of that yellow that goes right into the orange and it kind of blends on your palette together, on your canvas together. And 
now that you have the main shape of it, you can go in with a smaller brush and thicker paint and kind of just sweep on some of those natural flame shapes. And we're gonna have to let it dry before we can add a little bit more in there. But looking at it now, I'm thinking that we have our own island of Numenor. We can even add a little bit of white on our brushes and go into that wet flame that we've already drawn. Seeing how I'm just kind of dabbing some of that white into that middle, it's blending together on the canvas, but really bumping up that center of that flame coming out of the top of our tower. And at this stage, our painting is complete. We have our own picture of the island kingdom of Numenor that you did all by yourself. Depending on what type of artist you are or how much detail you want to go, you can still push it. You can keep adding values. You can keep adding shapes, whatever you feel like. But we have our base piece right here. Well, I hope we all enjoyed and I can't wait to see what you all come up with.